This is number four of the Gastoldi duos. And um, we're going to look at the bass part. It's the first one so far that's got a bass part. The previous ones have been for treble and tenor. And um, so, bass players, let's have a go, shall we? We're going to start on a back bow and in first position. And um, let's just see what happens. <laughs> But I do think that the first note, I don't think it's an upbeat. It's a I think that's the important. So plenty of sound in there. Whole bow, definitely a whole bow. And then here, even though there's a rest, I would leave my second finger on that G and add the third finger in above it, so chordal fingering even across the rest, and then you're properly in half position for that next bit. Should we play it together from the top, um, counting in minims, and one, two, one. hold this down and add the three. We're starting on a back bow. And none of those fingers need to come off, do they, on the left hand? So it's um which way round are we? Comes out there. And then you can just carry on. Good, let's go on to 20 then. Um half position at the end of this and a back bow after the crotchet rest. So a three on the C. And here we are, nicely the right way round for these quavers. Got to move up here. Or oh, you'll run out of fingers for this chap at the top. Reach back. But don't shift, because you'll need the four for that A there. This is the end of 20. 
starting in half position on a back bow. So we're one, two. <laughs> That's 27. I started back and in first position. Reach back for the B flats. So you've got the four to play the D with. And again, I keep the G down, add the third finger for the C and another back bow. But now you can put a two on the C. Let's play together from uh, 27, 27, and one. <laughs> from 37. Now I put another back bow in here, disguised it a bit by crossing the string to the A string because I wanted this to come the right way round. So the tuck is in um, 39, the F is a back bow and I made the A another back bow. Starting at the tip and one. Let's go on then, 42. Half position, back bow after the crotchet rest. I'm going to put a one on that D so that I've got the four for the A. And now we're backwards. I'm going to tuck that first crotchet um, quaver in and hope that nobody notices. After the B flats, it's on a string cross. So just if, um, on the first quaver on the C, I'm going to tuck another back bow in as I cross the string. Four there. way to solve that would be to start another forward bow there. I almost find that more intrusive than I think you can find that quite well and the, the weight is on the B flat isn't it? Shall we try that out? This is 42 starting on a back bow and one. First finger, four. And then a top. I seem to have arrived in half position.
that's reasonably straightforward, isn't it? Shall we just play the end of 46 and um, starting on a back bow for the C? Again, not a big one. Just think how much bow you need for that crotchet. Um, and I think I was in half position. Here we go. One and two. <laughs> for this one I think you need, a, need plenty of bow for that first note just watch that you're not starting with your wrist um, stuck in here because we'll get a really awkward beginning to that, that note so you're starting with the weight on this middle finger on the bow and with your wrist as just imagine that somebody comes along there you are just resting hanging about very relaxed in here nothing none of this and none of this very very relaxed and somebody just comes along and does that and that first note will start. You don't need to think, okay, I'm playing now. <laughs> I'm gonna make a make a sound. Just I happen to be there. Oh, and I've started to play. So very, very relaxed and, and led that way out. Here we go then. I'll count you in. One, two, one. <laughs> conscious that I'm just getting rid of notes a little bit or not playing them sort of very full and um, places like just starting in eight <laughs> I'm over exaggerating just so you can see what I mean but the first crotchet of ten I think is the end of that and the second crotchet so they both they're both crotchets aren't they on the page but they have such a different shape. The first one, I'm 
hardly hardly playing, got no weight on it at all. And then this one, much more connected to the string and a much speedier bow, I think. Does that make sense? There were also, there were a few where, um, oh, finishing with two minutes, like 25? So just look out for places where um, you've got notes that look the same, but they haven't got equal importance. Actually, even just going on from where we got to 27, rising line, just do make sure there's plenty of shape. Bit more. Um, contour in terms of pitch can be a really good indication about um, rising and falling dynamic if you like so rather than thinking I'm going to play these two bars loud and then I'm going to play these two bars quietly there's a much more subtle kind of coming and going in things even at the beginning it falls away but then this in all those crotchets the top one do you see what I mean? So just experiment with that. If you do it too much, you will start to feel a bit seasick because it'll it'll come and go. But um, if you don't do it at all, it's deadly dull. So try it out and, and see see what happens. We do not promote equal rights for all crotchets. And um, what's next? I'm going to put this down and find a tenor, and we'll play both parts together. Here we go with the tenor then. Um, I'll count you a whole bar in before I start, and then you're in halfway through the first bar. So here we go. One, two. <laughs> two bars in because we're changing the speed. Here we go. One, two, one, two. 